This is the 29th video of the playlist, the lie being that elect means born again. The following passage is the key one in the New Testament about the doctrine of election. Romans 9, 22-23 says, What if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make his power known, has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory? I discern the vessels of wrath are non-elect, whereas the vessels of mercy are elect. Concerning the humans, those the Father has been drawing to Jesus during this age, specifically the last 2,000 years since the truth came through Jesus Christ, John 1.17. And he says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, John 6.44. However, most of today's Christians talk about the term elect as if it means born again. It's basically what they're saying with this diagram when you just consider the last 2,000 years. They're saying that those who honor Jesus enter into the group called elect, as in became born again, which can't possibly be the case since Paul said, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ, 2 Timothy 2.10. The born again have already obtained salvation. The fact is that I've never heard a definition of election by someone who hasn't bought the lie about hell. I think that's where a big part of the problem lies. And I already covered that lie on this playlist. Believing this lie that hell is a real place where God who is love is sending most of humanity Christians twist scripture to fit their incorrect understanding. Having been enlightened to the lie about hell and to the ages, I discern that God broke up humanity for the present evil age. My guess is the next age as well, but I'm focusing on this age. I discern he broke us up into these two groups, vessels of wrath and vessels of mercy, non-elect and elect, in order to prove his point to us about the deceitful and wicked nature of our hearts, Jeremiah 17, 9. And since the New Testament is primarily focused on the present evil age, that's what I discern this passage is focused on as well. And when I plug in my understanding of what God has actually done through the ages, which I summed up on this graphic, and that hell is a man-made false doctrine, and that Jesus died for all of humanity, as I've already covered on the playlist, that he's been testing us, Deuteronomy 13.3, also already covered, and that he's proving to us our desperate need for Christ because of the intensely deceitful nature of the human heart, as the born-again body of Christ has historically proven beyond a doubt I discern that God broke us up into these two groups of elect and non-elect in order to use the non-elect like the control group, as I'm about to explain. While Christians talk about having been transformed, as I covered towards the beginning of the playlist, Christian history and current state of the body of Christ reveal that it's more like we've hardly been transformed at all so that it's practically impossible to tell who's born again today, since even the born again sin like crazy and refuse to be held accountable to the new covenant. Again, that's my testimony of 26 years. And having proven over these 2,000 years how deceitful we are, even when born again, Finally, further enlightened to our sins by the Lord at his appointed time, the born again will finally admit the truth about ourselves. Repenting, the lost elect, the current vessels of mercy who are not born again, will also finally come to Christ as a group, a time the Bible calls the latter rain downpour, depending on the translation. So that we'll see the fulfillment of Romans 9, 22 to 23, God making known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. It'll be fulfilled in stages, during the latter rain, then more so at the rapture, 
and even more so over the course of the next 1,000 years as we experience him in the flesh and live as resurrected souls in his kingdom. And since Jesus died for all of humanity, eventually everyone will see that destruction, spoken of in Romans 9.22, actually speaks of the vessels of wrath of this age, and the next age I discern, who will experience the resurrection of judgment, referred to in John 5.29, also called the second death in Revelation 2.11, for example, which I've already walked through on the playlist. The second death is the same that the born again have walked through during this life, having died to self, enough that we became born again. For us, that spiritual death came first, before physical death, but for them, it'll come second, after their physical death. So for them, it's the second death. Again, I discern God split us up into these two groups to reveal to us the depth of our depravity, since the only thing making the elect come to Christ is God, according to John 6.44, since there's none righteous, not even one, Romans 3.10. Without his help, no one would come to Christ, ever. So, while the Father drew the elect vessels of mercy to Christ, most have not become born again. They've rejected Jesus just like the vessels of wrath, the non-elect. And those who have become born again have mostly become worse than before they were born again, as Jesus warned us would happen if we didn't become his follower in combining Matthew 4.19, where he says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men, and Matthew 12.43-45, which I already walked through in the playlist. And on this book, which the Lord had me write for Alan Barda and make public, so you can download it from my website at notmock.com, I give plenty of examples of real people who I discern are born-again Christians who are worse than they were initially before they became born again. I know it because I knew them 24 years ago and they were much more loving and biblical than they are today. Today, they're extremely unloving and unbiblical because that's what he warned us of, that we would become worse having allowed seven spirits to come into us. Whereas before we became born again, we only had one evil spirit inside of us. So Jesus warned us that's what would happen if we didn't become his follower as opposed to mere believers like demons. James 2.19 says, you believe that God is one, you do well, good for you. But even the demons believe and they shudder. They shudder like a dog who's scared and rolls over on his back knowing that he's no match for you. The demons know it because he kicked them out of heaven. So while they shudder before God, they've been allowed by him to rule the earth, according to John 12, 31, for example. Since he's been using their rebellion to test us, as we're told, for example, in Ephesians 1, 11, that he's worked it all out for his purposes. In any case, enlightened to the truth, And more than half of the world's elect have been given the gospel message. And so all we had to do was submit to God, resist the devil, and he would have had to flee. The fallen angels would have had to flee. But that's the point. Our hearts are deceitful above all things so that even the born again have ignored God for these 2,000 years who we profess to know and love. Right now, nearly everyone thinks they're a good person, including born-again Christians. Yet, we've all proven how desperately deceitful and wicked we actually all are. The only thing keeping the born-again from being any worse is the Holy Spirit of God in us. And when God removes the blinders, we'll admit as a group that we really are capable of being just as bad as the worst humans have ever been. We'll finally get it. 
so that we'll finally express genuine gratitude to Christ for the work he did for us and is doing in us. And eventually everyone will discern this truth about themselves and about Christ. Study.com says the control group of an experiment is a group that is not exposed to the independent variable and thus serves as a benchmark for which to compare the results of the experimental group to. The vessels of wrath were not exposed to the independent variable. That would be Jesus Christ. They weren't exposed because as Jesus said, no one can come to him unless the Father draws them to him. They weren't drawn to the Lord, not exposed to the independent variable. Unlike the elect who were exposed to Jesus Christ, that he is God. While many have been exposed, have been called, for example, all the Romans in Jerusalem 2000 years ago were informed that Jesus is the Messiah. However, God is apparently doing more in his elect, which he refers to as drawing us. So that some of the elect have taken God seriously enough to have become born again. In any case, I discern this is what God has done, again, to reveal to us the extremely deceitful and wicked nature of the human heart. Without the non-elect vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, we wouldn't be able to see just how bad we can be. In other words, we wouldn't be able to appreciate what exactly Jesus did for us by being willing to go to the cross so that he could eventually give us a new heart, as he promised to do in Ezekiel 36, 26. He promised to give us his heart, and he revealed to us that his heart is totally unlike our deceitful and wicked heart. That was the point of his ministry, or a major part of the point of walking this earth for that time and having that ministry. And by the end of the ages, everyone will have admitted that this is exactly what we all need because until we get that new heart, we are all prone to being deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, as the body of Christ has been for these 2,000 years. So while we currently have to work out our own salvation, as we were told to do in Philippians 2.12 and mostly haven't done, which the body of Christ and I discern all elect will finally do as this age comes to an end, fully transformed by God, finally given the heart of Christ, will no longer have to work at it since being good, honest, and loving at all times will have become our nature. Glory to God. And in the end, all of humanity, everyone Jesus created, will be like him all the time, will be a completely new humanity, as he informed us in Ephesians 2.15. So, Father, I pray that you would convict the born again, and specifically Michael Weber, to actually listen to what's being said to him when I reach out to him, that he would not harden his heart, that he would not walk in pride because he's so enlightened, but that you would override his deceitful and wicked heart. If you don't, we'll never wake up to ourselves. We'll never fulfill the latter rain. We'll never fulfill the great commission. We'll never actually honor Christ, which means we'll never actually honor you during this age. And you've promised that we would. And so I'm um, expressing my full reliance on you, waiting for your appointed time and praying that it would be now as I reach out to him in a few weeks here. Amen.